Okay. Uh, this lecture we will study the so-called uh, Schwarz uh, Christopher transformation. Schwarz Christopher transformation. So the main um, topic is like this. Uh, probably several lectures later, we'll prove a, for a theorem, which is called Riemann mapping theorem. Uh, which says that if you have a uh, Connected uh, simply connected uh, domain which is not C. So let's call this Omega. And the uh, remark is here Omega not necessary. to have a good boundary, have a good boundary. The boundary can be very, very bad, even non lipsis or there's no meaning for the length of the boundary. Even if this, then we have the following conclusion, then there is a biholomorphic map biholomorphic means uh, let's call this f biholomorphic means f is uh, holomorphic and the f inverse exists is holomorphic as well F from omega, sorry, from D to omega, where D is defined by uh, it just a unit disk, open unit disk. So the idea is, suppose you have omega in C, which is not a whole C, then. This is your omega domain, and then this is your unit disk D. Then, from holomorphic point of view, these two are same. Those theorem called uniformization because omega is very weird, but then you see it just uh, another version of unit disk. On unit disk, you know everything clearly. Everything with comma. Okay, that's a um, abstract but general theorem. Uh, when we discuss the proof of Riemann mapping theorem, I will say more about its high, higher dimensional generalization or some other properties. It's very interesting and basic for uh, one complex variable. But now, what we are going to do is give some examples through this talk, this lecture, and the next lecture. Uh, give you some feeling why this is true. So schwartz christopher transformation is uh, going to do the following thing. Suppose you have polygon with vertex omega 1, omega 2, uh, of course it's in the complex plane, omega 3, blah blah, omega n minus 1, omega n. Okay, then consider 
the interior, then by Riemann mapping theorem, we hope that we can map this to the unit disk. And the unit disk, we, uh, I don't know if you do the homework, unit disk is the same as up half plane. So basically, we want to map this to uh, up half plane. If you, uh, you are brave enough, you also imagine that those vertex or the polygon should be on the real number line. Now corresponding to x1, x2, blah, 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 all the way to xm minus 1. Why m minus 1? Because the infinity points, we assign it to xn. Okay, we want to do this job, but uh, from if you want to construct uh, this map, it's hard. So instead, Schwartz Christoph uh, want to do the inverse map, F. Okay, so let's look at the geometry here. So observation or requirement here uh, xi xi plus one is mapped to a straight line and secondly go from left side o xi to its right side uh, the image changes the angle because for example uh, x1 to x2 if you go this way then corresponding to uh, this interval, this side, but then if you go x2 to uh, x3, so let's use uh, on the right hand side, you are on the same line, so the angle is same, but on the left hand side, originally you have this angle, but then you change it to this one. So there's a um, changing of the angle. So let's call it theta two. So that's our observation. And next we want to study. The last time we studied the conformal mapping. So next we want to study uh, how holomorphic maps change the angle. So study the conformal geometry locally. Okay. Oh, this is an abstract study. So we have two domains. And here you have Omega equals Fz, Omega zero is Fz zero. And uh, we want to consider the angle at the point zero, zero and uh, Fz zero. So take a smooth curl uh, parameterized by T passing through zero, such that uh, when t is zero, the, uh, the corresponding point is z zero. And then the image 
of the curl is then given by t maps to omega t, which is defined by f z t. passes through the point omega 0 equals fz 0 and noted that d omega dt is partial f partial z dot dz dt plus partial f partial z bar dot dz bar dt just train rule and of course the other the second part uh, vanishes so this is f prime z dz dt so the uh, algebraic uh, uh, interpretation is like following so suppose uh, on this side, you have curl, so probably passing through like this. So you have curl, and uh, at the point zero, z zero, you have tangent line. So the angle is. This is the origin. So the angle is theta. Okay, now after the uh, holomorphic map F, now you have omega t. So probably omega t is like this one, and uh, this is omega zero. And then you have tangent line here. So uh, if you draw, so you can dec decompose the bigger angle into two parts. One is parallel to theta. This is theta. This corresponding to uh, the argument of dz dt. And then you have another part, which is called delta. So delta is the argument of f prime z. So what is the uh, image? Uh, what is the angle of the image? So the conclusion is argument, the angle of the image at this point will be the angle of dz dt, the original curl, plus the argument of the derivative. So this is theta plus lambda. OK, the a quick remark is that if you look at our oh, not quick remark, uh, we will discuss this just in a moment. So now let's look at our example, the case we're interested in, suppose you have xi, you have some other x, and uh, uh, how to change the angle. Angles when you, uh, when going from left of xi to the right of xi. Okay, and uh, uh, since our requirement, when you map this, we require, recall that xi, I, xi plus 1, the interval is mapped to a straight line.
therefore you have conclusion. Uh, so suppose so. So here f so f. F derivative is a constant on x i x i plus one for all i. And but at the point x i, you have the change of angle. Then we have the following property: when z goes to x i from left from right side. Argument of f prime. Argument f prime z minus when you go from left hand side of x i you expect a change of angle theta i. So here theta i let's uh, record again. Theta i will be the Exterior angle at a vertex omega i. So this will be theta three. Okay, then you have a very important property that quick remark. F cannot be holomorphic in a full neighborhood of Xi. Because if it's holomorphic in a neighborhood of Xi, then F prime is continuous at Xi. Then you cannot have this jump. So otherwise, continues at xi and uh, we cannot change the angle because here you see definitely f prime z eh, sorry uh, the derivative of f is not continuous but inside so this is the first secondly Inside, uh, the polygon, we expect F to uh, not not the uh, polygon. Inside the up half plane. We expect F to be holomorphic. Then next we are going to construct some holomorphic map on the upper half plane so that uh, its value on the real number line exhibits some strange properties. One is uh, uh, done, oh, okay, sorry. here you have, should be argument uh, F prime is a constant. So first is the argument of f prime on the small intervals on real number line is constant, and uh, at the end point of the small intervals, you have a jump corresponding to theta i. Okay, then we look at the following. We don't have a lot of choice actually. You have the functions you know well of uh, sine, cosine, exponential log uh, a power function polynomials and if you think about previously we know that when you take power functions you have several you have double cover or triple cover or whatever and then uh, the angle is enlarged by two or by three so you do have some change of angle possibility at the origin therefore here we want to construct uh, the map f based on 
uh, a combination of power functions. So first look at gz equals z to alpha's power. And then, of course, we need to take a branch. Actually, you need to take a branch for log z. Okay, then uh, in this lecture, a convenient choice will be get rid of the negative imaginary part. So your angle is from uh, negative pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2. Or why do you get rid of the negative part, negative imaginary part? Because uh, the domain we have is up half plane. So if you get rid of the negative part, don't hurt your uh, up half plane. So you still have the domain inside the uh, defining domain for z, z to alpha's power. Okay, now let's look at the change of angle uh, as a point origin. So, change of the angle when going from left of the origin to the right of the origin. OK, now let's look at, so when you do uh, so when Let's take when x less than zero, what's the value of z alpha? So z alpha is x x alpha is x norm to alpha's power times exponential alpha times um the angle is pi, so it's times i pi. OK. And uh, so when x is greater than 0, x alpha is just this one. Therefore, the argument g, when x from limit, x from uh, right side of 0 minus limit x from right side, left side of uh, 0 argument gx is given by negative i alpha pi. You do have some change. OK, now we construct a uh, function oh, before that if oh, one more step if take alpha to be theta i divided by pi then angle changes Sorry, this i is the uh, index. Uh, minus, let's take minus theta i divided by pi. The angle changes. Mm, theta i. OK, then we have the candidate as following. Uh, of course, here we consider the uh, behavior around the origin. If we consider behavior around the 
呃，西塔 i， 呃 ，x i。Then we have have to translate 呃、uh, the function a little bit alpha i or z minus x i to negative theta i divided by pi. So the candidate function to change uh, change the angle at a corresponding point will be product j from one to n minus one z minus x j uh, minus k j. So k j is theta j divided by pi. Of course, this function is g is well defined uh, on c minus uh, i y y less than or equal to zero. But this is not our f. The reason is, recall that the angle changes corresponding to so after the holomorphic map, corresponding to uh, the argument of omega d omega d t uh, is argument d z d t plus argument f prime so your g therefore g corresponds to f prime so that uh, the change of angle is related to the original map original graph okay then we can write down our construction explicitly so integrated our map f so this f is the same as a map uh, at the very beginning the one we want to construct from uh, up half plane to the polygon from z uh, product from 1 to n minus 1 to c minus xj minus kj d k c plus b of course you had two uh, variable two parameters to fix so first let's explain the role of b so what is b b is suppose you have a polygon then b just uh, translate your polygon okay so it's cor it corresponds to the translation and what is the row of A recall that uh, uh, until now we only consider the angle changing of the polygon we never consider the actual la size of the polygon. So the row of A, you call, has two parts. So the magnitude part just uh, scaling scale your A and the theta part correspond to rotation so theta 
So th those uh, par parameters A and B correspond to the uh, absolutely position of the polygon in the complex domain. And uh, our integration formula, integral formula, gives you the relative position. Okay, then the formula seems good, but then we have a drawback that, however, x1, x2, xm minus 1 are not given a priori because our original problem is map the polygon to the up half plane. You know the information of the polygon, but you don't know the information of the up half plane. For example, where the vertices map to. So that's a drawback of our method. Okay, so we need to determine x1, x2, xn. So for x1, uh, you don't need to worry, just choose arbitrary point as x1. Otherwise, the function is deferred by translation. So for x1, choose in your formula. So the formula is here. This is the schwartz christoph transformation. Choose. You see, in the transformation, the integral is a definite integral, so it has a starting point, z0. So here, choose z0 to be x1, then b, the parameter b is given by omega1. So you fix the parameter b, and uh, uh, Look at the formula A if you integrate along the real number line from x mu to x mu plus 1. T minus xj to minus kj dt equals uh, omega mu plus 1 minus omega mu. So you have this formula for mu from 1 to m minus 2. And if we write, uh, we we express the a power function in the real coordinate, then we should look at, we should note it the following. So if you have t minus xj to minus kj's power, then it is absolute value of t minus xj when t greater than xj, or t minus xj times exponential negative i kj pi if t less than xj. Then if you plug in, you have uh, a times mu plus 1 to m minus 1 exponential negative i k j pi times the real integral from x mu to x mu plus 1 product j from 1 to m minus 1 t minus x j absolute value to negative kj's power dt. This is omega mu plus 1 minus omega mu. So just a remark, a quick application, quick byproduct is argument a is argument omega 2 minus omega 1 plus summation j from 2 to m minus 1. kj pi. Okay, then uh, uh, 
then we want to determine the uh, magnitude of A. So look at this one. We just take a magnitude of both sides. Because now we use all the information about the angle. XJ are real numbers, there's no angle, so we don't need to worry about angle anymore. So we have this, but now mu is from 1 to m minus 2. Now let's count. We have unknown, n unknowns. So magnitude A, x1 to x m minus 1. Okay, then uh, we have m minus 2 equations so far. This is a delta part. To solve it, we need two more. So let's think about which information we haven't used. That is the vertex omega n, which corresponds to the infinity point on the upper half plane. So we need to consider the following. The following uh, intervals. First, t is from x n minus 1 to infinity. Go to part infinity. Secondly, we have negative infinity to t. Go to negative infinity. And if you write down the formula, you have a times t equals x m x m minus one to part infinity product t minus x j to minus k j's power d t is omega m minus omega m minus one a from negative infinity to x one product t j t minus x j minus k j d t is omega 1 minus omega n. And uh, if you take the norm, because we don't care about the angle now, we already solved the angle for A. So if you take the norm, you have the following uh, real integral. from negative infinity to x1 product but we we do we do have enough equations to solve but in general the integral yeah is quite a long nonlinear you have x you have variables in the integrand, also in the uh, domain. So the domain is given by x, xi, xi plus 1. So it's quite complicated. So in general, those points are hard to solve by hand. But of course, you can use a, a computer to approximate. That's not so hard, but just for this case, it's hard. And uh, but for the simple case, we can produce by hand. Uh, one of the key feature of Riemann mapping theorem I haven't mentioned is that the proof is abstract using the Dirichlet principle or the existence of solution for some PDE kind of stuff. Uh, and probably not in this one, but in the general uniformization theorem, you need that stuff. But then, 
the drawback is you cannot write down the by holomorphic map explicitly, or even have any idea what the expression for that or not. In our case, the advantage of uh, Schwarz-Christoph transformation is that at least you have the formula. You only have some discrete uh, parameters to determine it. Okay, you have m parameters to determine it. So that's uh, relatively easy. At least you know the property. For example, what's the derivative of it? You just take a derivative of the function, and you have estimate. Probably the estimate depends on m parameters. That's not a big issue. OK, next, let's look at uh, several easy examples. The first example is how to transform the upper half plane to a triangle, equilateral triangle. And uh, let's uh, fix the uh, uh, vertices of the triangle. Omega 1 is 0, omega 2 is 1, omega 3 is 1 half plus square root 3 over 2i. And then, of course, you want to map negative 1 to 0 which is omega 1 and 1 to 1. OK, by uh, Schwarz-Christoph transformation, we can consider Fz, the map Fz, as uh, A times integration negative 1 to Z, D cos C, cos C plus 1, Notice that here the exterior angle for each vertices of the equilateral triangle is uh, 2 thirds pi. So here you have 2 over 3 pi, and you can see minus 1, 2 over 3. Oh, sorry. 2 thirds. And there's, there's no b because uh, when you take z to be negative 1, you have 0. OK, then we can determine argument A. What is argument A? Argument A is uh, argument omega 2 minus omega 1 plus, by the formula, the angle uh, zeta 2. So this is. 0 plus 2 pi over 3, 2 pi over 3. And then the magnitude is, let's consider uh, the point omega 2. So omega 2 norm is uh, A norm times integration from 1 to, negative 1 to 1, dt, t plus 1, 2 thirds, t minus 1, 2 thirds. And then A is... Uh, norm of A is 1 over integration negative 1 to 1, 1 minus t square, uh, dt over 1 minus t square 2 thirds. If you change the variable, uh, let tau be t square, okay, then you have it's 1 over uh, 0 to 1. one minus tau two thirds times tau one half d tau d tau oh, why this is true well, we can step by step so here d tau is two t d t okay then Negative 1 to 1 dt, 1 minus t squared, 2 thirds, is 2 times integration from 0 to 1 dt, 
1 minus t squared 2 thirds and then you plug in tau you have it's an integration from 0 to 1 2 times this and uh, uh, d tau over 2t times 1 over 1 minus tau 2 thirds and then you uh, use t is square root of tau you have this is 0 to 1 of uh, d tau over t 1 half 1 tau 1 half 1 minus tau 2 third that's exactly computation okay of course we cannot uh, write down an explicit number for this integral, but we know this is a beta function, b one half, one third. Okay, therefore your holomorphic map can be write down as b one, one over b one half, one third, exponential i two pi over three, and the integration from negative 1 to z, 1 over cosy plus 1 2 thirds, cosy minus 1 2 thirds, d cosy. So this maps the up half plane. To the equilateral triangle uh, in the problem. Okay, if you want to the other map from equilateral triangle to upper half plane, you just take the inverse map of F. But probably the inverse map is complicated. We will not discuss here. Okay, next we look at another example. Example of using uh, Schwartz Christopher transformation to show that sine function maps a vertical up half stripe to the up half plane So here, the region we have is negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. And uh, the strap all the way to infinity. And you want to map it to the up half plane. Or we consider the inverse map from the up half plane to this one. So the up half plane. If, I don't know if you noted that here we always set two points on the real number line of the up, of the up half plane by negative one and one. This is not important because uh, you will if you choose for example zero five, then by changing the variables a and b correspondingly, you can move it to negative one to one. So it doesn't matter, just a renormalizing of your parameters. But if later on when we study four points, that is a elliptic integral, you will find then you cannot just assign those points arbitrarily. The relative, re uh, relative uh, distance corresponding to the uh, relative distance of the polygon Okay, so that's the difference. Okay, then uh, of course we expect f negative 1 to negative pi over 2 
and f1 to pi over 2. Therefore, if you write down the Christoph transformation, uh, Schwarz Christoph transformation, we have this d kc kc plus 1, 1 half, kc minus 1, 1 half. Okay, now let's uh, solve it. We test at point 1. Then we have the following equation plus a negative 1 d c c c plus 1 half c c minus 1 half. Okay, then a is pi over negative 1 to 1, d c c c plus 1, 1 half, c c minus 1, 1 half, and then equals dt over, uh, now we get rid of the, uh, let's compute the power function, so for this one, because Kc is between negative 1 to 1, it's positive. So you can just write down as t plus 1, 1 half, norms, uh, norm square root. And then for this one, you know, the angle is pi. So if you take root, so it's pi over 2. Therefore, you have actual i here. Okay, so I hope you can understand why we have actual I here that correspond to the angle is pi for this guy okay then what do you have you have this is uh, pi over squared negative 1 to 1 dt squared 1 minus t squared and uh, times i and this is easy to see, it's i pi arc sine t 1 to negative 1. And then this is uh, i. So a is i. Therefore, then fz is negative pi over 2 plus i times negative 1 to z d c c plus 1 square root c c minus 1 minus 1 square root okay but now we want to simplify a little bit more because we construct Schwartz crystal transformation but we didn't show uh, the relation between the sign and this map so notice that for z uh, equals t lying in negative 1 to 1, ft is negative pi over 2 plus integration from negative 1 to t ds dx square root 1 minus x square and uh, which is arc sine t. Then what does that mean? So, uh, take the inverse map of sine inverse z, then z is sine omega then you know uh, what we have here this map the inverse map actually is sine Why this is true? Because 
so this is uh, Z play this is uh, Omega play why this is true because we show that uh, F along negative one to one coincides with the holomorphic function psi z inverse or arc psi z then by the uniqueness of holomorphic functions we know f coincides with psi inverse z therefore if you in this case a very tricky part is that usually we don't know the inverse map or um, Schwartz crystal transformation because it's inverse map or uh, integral it's hard but in this special case we are very lucky the inverse map is uh, much understandable it's a sine function then you see use sine function we map it to map the half stripe to the up half plane uh, later on, when we study some explicit examples of Kampo map, we'll come back to this again. Basically, how you think this is, you just uh, put this size down and put this size down. Therefore, you fill out the whole up half plane. Okay, next, uh, let's study a little bit more a complicated example, example of conformal mapping from the up half plane to a rectangle. And uh, its relation to uh, inverse of uh, Jacobian elliptic sine function. So suppose you have the up half plane on this side. And you have four points. Oh, sorry, on that side you have uh, a rectangle. Let's denote its vertices uh, as following. It is. Okay, so it go this way. We place in this way. So here you have negative k. Here you have capital K. Negative k minus i. Uh, k prime. K minus i k prime. So that's a rectangle. Okay, and uh, correspond to these four vertices on this side, uh, you have four points. As we mentioned before, by renormalizing uh, uh, parameters A and B, we can fix two of the points to negative one and one. And then because, uh, because of the symmetry, the other two points could be put on negative 1 over small k and 1 over small k, such that k is less than 1. OK, then if we write down the schwarz crystal transformation, we noted that this corresponds to uh, 
the following integral. Integration from 0 to z and uh, d cos c, c plus 1 over k square cos c plus 1 square cos c minus 1 square root cos c minus 1 over k square root. And uh, then uh, on the other side, you have two modulus. It's called the elliptic modulus. Uh, capital K is the real integral from 0 to 1 dx square root 1 minus x square 1 over k square minus x square and k prime is the integral from 1 to 1 over k dx square root x1 x square minus 1 1 over k square minus x square so actually those are called uh, the modulus or elliptic integral. So let's let's introduce the elliptic integral. So more commonly, people use the following definition: f theta, which is integration zero to z d cos c square root one minus cos c square times 1 minus k square c square. Okay, but originally people just restrict c to x to real numbers. But if we want to uh, extend it holomorphically, then we need to cut it. So next, uh, choose a branch for square root 1 minus k c square 1 minus k square k c square so as before if you think about what we did uh, before when you have product or two power functions and uh, one slit one cut is from 0 to infinity the other one is from negative 1 to infinity we can actually combine them to get only cut along negative one, uh, 0 to 1. So the same idea here. It suffices to cut these two small intervals. Then the remaining part, on the remaining part, we can define the uh, function. So let D C subtract negative one over k to one union one to one over k. So a good question is why we uh, only get rid of this. The reason is although it's not simply connected, but you, if you w walk around the slit once, then the change accounts to two pi. So exponential 2 pi i gives you 1. So there's no ambiguity to define the function. OK, then we, uh, for each single factor, 1 minus k c, 1 plus k c, 1 minus k c, 1 plus k c, we need to define the angle. So here we do the following. Uh, so define the angle for the up half plane okay points to see in the up half plane usually we denote by h plus as follows so 1 minus k c is r exponential i theta 1. Theta 1 is between pi over 2 to 3 pi, negative 3 pi over 2. 1 plus k c is r exponential i theta 2. Angle is from negative pi over 2 to theta 2, 3 pi over 2. 
and 1 over k minus k c is uh, the angle is between negative 3 pi over 2 and pi over 2 1 over k plus k c is between negative pi over 2 3 pi over 2 so if you draw a picture what does that mean? so that means Suppose you have point C here, and you have negative 1 over k, negative 1, 1, 1 over k. So the angle, we call that 1 minus C. So uh, the direction is this way. So the angle, theta 1, is this angle. OK, then uh, 1 plus C. So the angle is, uh, so that is C minus negative 1. So the angle is this one. And then you have. Uh, 1 plus k minus k c. So the angle is theta 3. Lastly, k c plus 1 over plus 1 over k. So this is theta 4. And then it's easy to see why we choose theta 1, theta 2, theta 3, theta 4 in different intervals. Because for theta 1 and theta 3, you can touch all the so let me draw it here. One. One. One over k. Negative one. Negative one over k. So for points one over k, you, you will miss the vertical line above it. And same for one. If you consider, uh, c, a uh, one minus c. So one minus c can uh, so what, what should I say cannot be on the positive image can cannot be on the uh, vertical line above 1 and the same thing for 1 over k minus k, k c above 1 over k and then for uh, k c plus 1 over k k c plus 1 over k cannot be on the vertical line below 1 over k C plus 1 cannot be vertical line below 1, negative 1, negative 1, okay, negative 1. So to make the function uh, continuous, then you need to cho choose the angle in the above way. Okay, now let's compare the similar choice of angle for the original crystal, uh, schwarz christoph transformation. In that case, if you have point C, negative 1 over K, negative 1, 1, 1 over K, then in that choice, because our C is always positive, so it's always C plus or C minus, then our angle is always like this okay then you see the difference so alpha 1 minus theta 1 equals alpha 3 minus theta 3 equals pi alpha 2 
equals theta two, alpha four equals theta four. Therefore, it's easy to derive that the conclusion, the usual elliptic integral defined by this, which is called f theta here, is negative f. Here, f is uh, schwarz christoph transformation. OK. Uh, people study a lot about the uh, elliptic integral. For example, uh, they denote the inverse function as uh, Sn uh, Sn omega Z is Sn omega. This is the inverse of F theta, which is a elliptic uh, uh, this is a elliptic integral. This is a Jacobian sine function, elliptic function. Actually, as I mentioned before, people, originally people want to study the elliptic integral, but find it's very, very hard. Later on, Jacobian and Abelian find that if you think about the elliptic function, then it's much, much easier. And uh, different point of view, different angle to view the problem just give you the topological structure of the nowadays called the elliptic curve or torus. Okay, so why this is easy? So let's look at d omega over dz. So this just derivative of the integral is 1 minus z squared, 1 minus k squared z squared. If you think about the dz o dz d omega, then it's one minus z square, one minus k square z square. If you plug in z is s n omega, so d s n omega d omega square is one minus s n omega square one minus k square s n omega square. So why we call it sine function, if you look at sine omega, then you have d omega sine omega square is 1 minus sine omega square. This is all the fancy stuff of sine, cosine come from this formula. If you define sine by the integral as well, Here we call it a uh, elliptic uh, uh, Jacobian sine function because we have a very similar relation. The derivative is expressed uh, in terms of the original function. It's uh, not true. So the other one, so I would like to say, if you have exponential omega, for example, d d omega, this is itself. Okay, and uh, for sine omega, you take derivative, it's a polynomial of sine omega of degree 2. And for sin, sn omega, it's a polynomial of sn omega of degree 4. And actually, you can ask if you have a question. I don't know the answer either. Uh, is there... Uh, holomorphic function g for example dg d omega for example uh, 
square or whatever is a polynomial P O G O degree six for instance or five whatever you want. Okay, next we end up with this section by the combination of the Schwartz reflection principle. And this gives you exactly the torus, torus structure or the inverse map. So now suppose you have you already we already have the elliptic uh, uh, integral. So this side you have elliptic integral. And on this side you have the Jacobian uh, sine function. And uh, noted that sine function omega on the boundary takes a real value. Okay, then what can we do? L let me draw this again. Then you can use Schwartz reflection principle. You can flip it, reflect it, and then define sine omega on the blue part. And therefore, the image also reflected. OK, so let me, let me, let me change the color. And then the image will be this part. And then you also reflect it uh, along this side. OK, then you also have this on this side. Reflect it on this side. Reflect it on this side. And of course, you can do the similar thing for all the, because you have block, you have rectangle, then you can do all the way around. So until tiling, the whole complex plane. So now you have a complex miromorphic function. It's a miromorphic function from C to C and uh, which is miromorphic. Uh, if we have time, I would like definitely come back to this to analysis uh, a principal part the poles and uh, some extra uh, property. But here, two important properties are as follows. Firstly, Sn omega uh, has two periods, k i k prime, that is sine omega plus mk plus nik prime is sine omega. This is a two period. If you, if you ask for one period, so what is a one period function? So one period. This is the exponential omega plus 2 pi i. 2k pi i equals exponential omega. You only have one 
uh, period. Similarly, for psi, cosine. So those are one period. An elliptic of integral elliptic function is a two period fun uh, object. So that's the main reason why people didn't find it as early as sine, cosine, exponential. Because you see the topological structure changed. Okay, uh, I will stop here for this time. Next time, we will study more about the uh, automorphism.